about this this thing where we have a certain amount of humans, right? Like, you know, you have, you have this huge amount of out of schools that get rejected, uh, people and all that. You know, we can have uh, work in society towards achieving athleticism and towards achieving, you know, reduction. So the entire society as of now, you know, what they care about is like watching sports and other like things that don't really matter. And so, you know, when you're saying we should just breed more people into existence as of now, I'm just thinking, you know, what, what am I breeding them into existence for? Like, we don't even have at all any concept. Yeah, there, there are several, that. there are several reasons you would breed them into existence. But okay. we don't have there any several. Concession. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Even if, no, even if, even if you don't have concession, there are, there are several reasons why a negative utilitarian would have to bring more people into existence. Just, just as an aside, there's actually two reasons why you're not addressing what Avi's saying there. The first is that it doesn't actually address the conceptual point. And the second is that now you're making an empirical claim, which Avi would just push you on as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I did, I did concede his point. I said that if that was the case, that it prevented more suffering. And now that now I'm just saying, about the practicality, I'm saying yeah, that. Yeah, so there are reasons no, 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 no. there. But, but, but even, even if not... everyone was just like a hedonist and like not even thinking about, you know, uh, like suffering. If everyone it's wasn't an athlete. It's, 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 it's still going to be the case that obvious objection applies. So you think if that, that is, if everyone that doesn't agree about ethelism, if if no one here agrees about ethelism, right, then what I'll be saying doesn't apply at all because it, now it I'm just absolutely bringing... applies. It, 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 certainly, it certainly does, and in fact, it applies even more strongly because we're even less focused on pragmatically killing everything off. So we're actually going to be even less efficient. No, we're not. We're just going to be doing the same thing that the animals are doing, right? So it's either us living here or the animals living in nature kind of thing. If we all get to talk about this stuff like, you know, rationally and we actually actually can come to conclusions, then we can have a society that might actually start having people who do agree about this ethelism thing. And then, you know, we can actually start having this discussion of, you know, because we, we don't want to reduce our population all the way down to zero too fast and then we don't even notice you know like oh holy crap there's no more humans anymore and we haven't even figured this out right so i would agree like about you know uh if we are going to but in a smart way i would agree that you know people who do have children like poor people who just you know they shit humans into the world and then they just kind of hold their child as like oh everyone has to you know pay me for welfare now because if they don't now my child's going to suffer you know all, all these kind of things you know we'd have to take care of that you know as we're going you can't just try to get me to like can see that I should have a child now in a world where no one's agreeing about this crap and you know the human population is why is that why it doesn't listen it doesn't matter even if even if no one is agreeing about it the the reasons there could still be reasons for a negative utilitarian to prefer a world in which people are humans are breeding even if no one is agreeing on ethelism there are reasons the negative utilitarian can have that. So one reason, one reason is Wait, that... You said the reasons. You said the reasons earlier, didn't you? You said the reason was so that we can figure out how to do ethelism. No, better, right? no, that's not the only reason. Another, another reason, another reason is that it would, we would necessarily take over animal niches and they would cause less animals to breed. And because of that, on a net, there would be less suffering. Even if no one is on board with ethelism, it would still be less bad if there's less suffering rather than more suffering. Right. Thought, so you the, think that they're they're preventing more animals from breeding than them themselves? So you think a human life like like now you're just making a trade off between how much is a human life worth versus how much of animal a suffering human life doesn't, doesn't cause as much suffering as an animal life. No, no, we don't get eaten a lot. It's it's not it's not about um, like value of a human life. We're not making like a well being claim here. What Avi's saying is that living in the wilderness is so much more suffered than living as like a human life because of the fact that there exists things like disease, viruses, predators, etc. Yeah, I agree. So the, the, the view is, is that if we don't have some robust way to immediately eliminate life um, universally, it's not even just like a, I mean, I mean, maybe Avi could be pragmatic and say something like, we could limit ourselves like, a, the, gal like the galactic space because maybe it's impossible for us to remove all life universally. But you could say, like, if we don't have a, a way on the horizon or even a beginning conception of how we could do that in the near future, then there's actually a pragmatic reason to uh, continue to have humans just because of, A, the trade-off, and B, the possibility that someone can come along and create that method. So there's okay, actually, so this is why... So, 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 like, the whole sports objection just isn't going to work. It, it doesn't deal with the cons, nor 
is it like a strong empirical claim you can make? So here's the thing, like, you know, in, 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 in the scenario he's telling me right now, it sounds very, very different from the scenario of most natalists, right? And so he is giving me a much better reason to have children, right? But at the same time, he has to, he has to admit that he has to say sorry to his child for bringing him here, you know? He has to say I, that what I, he did I, to his I, child I, was I a terrible actually don't, thing. I, I, actually, I actually don't know why he conceded that. I don't think that's true. I think that that in and of itself is actually begging in some some amount of deontology. I think that the point is, is that overall it's still a good action. That's the point in that it's a good But you'd have to say sorry to your child. Right? Like, why, why do I have to say yeah. sorry to my child for doing the right thing? For, not, for, for doing the, less immor the least immoral thing I could do? Because you have to, to tell them. Fair, like, hey. I, think you actually, I, I think you conceded earlier that it's actually a bad thing. I don't know why you... Yeah. Why, do I, why do I have to apologize? Well, if you're going to yeah, be honest to your son... Good, it's good in virtue of it being the least bad. Yeah, why do I have to apologize to my child for doing the least bad thing? Like, because that, I'm sorry. Like, of course, you, I mean, of course I did the least bad thing. That was the least bad thing. Yeah, I know, but you're, but he's the one who has to eat shit for it, right? So, like, you have to say sorry to him for... Why do, uh, I, ha why do I have to say... Uh, what, um, where, is no, that come, stemming from negative utilitarian? Wait, does it follow okay, that I... To. Wait, 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 wait. When you say, I have to say sorry to my child, is that being derived from negative utilitarianism? Wait, say it again, sorry. When you say, I have to say sorry to my child, do, is that being derived? Is that... Well, is that normative claim being derived from negative utilitarianism? It seems to be for me because, like, if my if my parent was just like sounds like deontology, to be honest with you. No, I would suffer well, immensely there's if there's I had a, a there's parent. There's a sense in which he's right, Avi, because he's atomizing it, you know, down. Right? There, there's no I mean, universalization of it. Wait, let, it's, it's, let, it's, let it's, it's, a, it's a discount. It's a discounted claim. Unless the only like, reason in, it, look, it, wait, it's wait, in Avi, isolation. Listen, listen. Wait, Listen, wait, 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 let me, let me, let me just, I'll go, and, I'll go and then I'll let you go. The only reason from negative utilitarianism that you should say sorry to your child for being born is if it would reduce suffering. If it would increase suffering, if it would remind the child that he was born and of his suffering, then you should not say sorry to your child. Yes, I'm saying to you, if someone, you know, hurts you, okay, uh, in order to prevent suffering, you know, you can, he, he might understand, like your child might understand so you did that, you know, you, you, you did this negative thing to him uh, in order to reduce suffering out there, you know, to wild animals. You can explain okay. that there's animals out there being, you know, harmed much more than he is. Listen, right? listen, you're not following. You're not, you're not following what I'm saying. You're not tracking. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll, let you... I'll let you go, but it's based on what you're saying, you haven't tracked what I said. Uh, can, I, can I respond fully? Sure, go ahead. So you still have to tell your child, you know, that he, he, you did give birth to him, even though you knew it was bad, even though you knew that it would cause him some suffering, that you did it anyways because it, it relieved suffering in someone else, right? So you'd have to concede that to your child, parent who, you know, screwed me over in some way by, like, bringing me into existence and pretended like it was a great thing the whole time, never, never told me that, you know, maybe there's something bad that went on here. Because what you're doing here is, like, you're, you're bringing up something very valid. Like, if you're saying that, you know, more humans means less wild animals, and therefore there's less, you know, uh, really terrible suffering that's happening in nature. I can concede to that point, but I'm just saying that you'd have to tell your your son, you know, what I did was immoral, and that you know, anti-natalism is true. Okay, I, I, under I, I understand what you're saying. You're not you're you're going on a bit of a ramble now. I understand what you're saying, and and it's clear that you haven't tracked what I've said. So I'd so I want you to really try to track this. Look, on a negative utilitarian framework, whether you have to or do anything is completely dependent on the suffering that is produced, especially on a hard utilitarian view, the suffering that is produced from doing that or not doing that. So, if it is the case that me telling my child sorry will result in more suffering, whether that could be because the child could be reminded of his existence and how much suffering he has and being screwed over by me. If my, the act, the very act of me telling my child, sorry for bringing you into the world, resulted in more suffering, then on a negative utilitarian view, I ought not tell my child sorry.
So the thing is, like, you're being honest to your child, right? Like, if if I if my if no, my but you shouldn't. Negative... In that case, you shouldn't on a negative utilitarian view. On a negative utilitarian view, if being honest results in more suffering, you ought not be honest. And I'm saying here that it doesn't result in, in less utility because if I was <laughs> how, a child, how do you know that? How do you know that? Maybe they will remind. Okay, go ahead. I'm just thinking I like about I like that's an empirical no that's you just think about yourself that's an empirical claim you're saying like on if you want to say like on average parents telling their child sorry for bringing you into existence will reduce suffering that's an empirical claim I'd like you to provide evidence I'm just saying it, it doesn't seem that we know that a father telling their child sorry would reduce suffering or not Well the best evidence I have here is for explains to me you know what happened and, and why it happened it did something right then I'll, I'll, I'll appreciate that a lot more than if they just never talk that's about just, it. That's just, okay, and, that, and that's just you. That's just, you're so, just appealing to what you would, wait, now you're just appealing to what would reduce your suffering. So in that case, yes, if, if, it, if something would reduce your suffering, your father, if your father telling you sorry for breeding you would okay. reduce your suffering, then, then yes, wait, hold on. If your father telling you that I'm sorry I bred you into existence would reduce your suffering, then yes, on a negative utilitarian framework, okay, be done. Well. However, there, you would certainly wait, wait. You would certainly agree that that's not universally true. There are there some are kids who would res experience more suffering by told the, by being told the truth, and those kids, on a negative utilitarian view, ought be lied to. So you're agreeing with me here, but the thing is that you said at the beginning, you said... No, that, yeah. well, listen, you listen, that you said, you said, out. no, you, you said, you said, I have to, I have to tell my child sorry for being born. And I am answering you and saying on a negative utilitarian view, that doesn't necessarily follow. It could be that telling my child sorry is an immoral act on a negative utilitarian view. It could be that it's a moral act. It, it just depends contextually on whether it would increase or decrease suffering. Yeah, but you'd have to be honest about it. You can't tell them, you know... Why do I have to be honest if it would increase suffering on a negative utilitarian view? Well, we increase, we increase suffering by telling why them the this was a great fuck thing. Should I, I'm an, why the fuck am I caring about honesty if it has nothing to do with suffering? If it, because uh, often, oftentimes, you know, <laughs> not, not being honest to your child about something can lead to very bad feelings, right? So if you just completely... Okay, ignore, so are you... Okay, so then the question is, then this is, this is an empirical claim now. So the question is, if I'm being honest about telling my child it was a bad thing I brought him into existence, I'm sorry for doing it for you, if you're making the case, if you want to make the case that instead of we, neither of us know it, what will happen, if you want to make case there's a general trend that that would reduce suffering among children, I'm going to ask you to provide evidence. Do you have such evidence? Uh, other than my own, like, uh, feeling about it, not much. You know, I can ask okay. more people about it and see what mm -hmm. kind of agreement we get. You okay, know, so you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have evidence. Now, certainly, you would admit, you would also agree that there are certain atomized cases where the child will experience more suffering by me apologizing to him. So you'd have to consider this scenario. Wait, that's not an no answer. No answer the question. Listen. Look, yeah, yeah, do you yeah, agree? Yeah, answered, yeah. Okay, good. So that in those cases, it, would you not agree that it would be the wrong thing for me to do to apologize to my kid? I'll agree, yes. And so okay, then how, can, then how do you know? Then why did you tell me that I have to apologize to my kid? Uh, well, I'm saying that it's at least something you have to consider, right? You have to actually... Oh, uh, no, that's not what you, what you didn't say. I need to... Con no, no, no. You didn't say I need to consider apologizing to my kid. You said I have to apologize to my kid. Uh, sure, I'll take it back. I don't mind taking okay, it back. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so, so I don't so I don't have to apologize to my kid. It's just something I would I would consider. Sure, I agree with that. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would consider all actions. I would consider all actions that could increase or decrease suffering on a negative utilitarian. Okay, so you're a negative utilitarian. I didn't say I was a negative utilitarian. I'm just saying from a negative utilitarian perspective. It doesn't follow that one be an antinatalist on a negative utilitarian view, and it doesn't follow one apologize to their kids on a negative utilitarian view. Well, it follows you have to think about whether you should apologize to your kid or not, right? It's something you should be considering. Should consider uh, no, one, no, one, no, one, no, one, no one fought you on that. Of course, you consider all actions on a negative utilitarian view. What a what negative utilitarianism considers... Like, no, one, no, you said, you said, I have to apologize to my kid. Then I fought you. Because... It doesn't follow from negative utilitarianism that I have to apologize to my kid. It all depends on whether it would increase or decrease suffering. So, yeah. all I'm saying is that from a negative utilitarian view, 
the applied ethics, the, with the respect to applied ethics, antinatalism does not necessarily follow. Having, having to apologize to your kid for being born does not necessarily follow. And it could follow that we ought breed more people into existence, not for breeding them into existence on a an, an negative utilitarian view. Well, that's because what I do is I put things in isolation. So I say, like, you know, raping someone is bad in isolation. You can make rape good if it's... Why is, why is raping on a negative utilitarian view, why is raping bad in isolation? In isolation? Because you're causing the victim suffering. Okay, good. And so, so there are, you would certainly admit that there are cases where rape ought to be performed if it would decrease suffering. Exactly. Yeah. There's okay. Good. So then, be- so then, there are certainly case. Then, then the only thing I would say is that one can make the case. It's. It's. I would say it's harder to make the case that on average this is something that would increase, uh, d- that would decrease suffering. But in the case of yeah, breeding humans, agree. but that's not. But I don't think that's necessarily the case with breeding humans. With breeding humans, I think it's not obvious to me that that would increase suffering because if we, once we factor in the the decrease yeah, in wild say, yeah you can say that this is one of those scenarios where we're preventing more suffering than we're creating right but you have to admit that the actual action itself of procreation i don't bad. care if it's bad or not all i'm saying is if, if one what question. one ought to do no 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 that's not the question the question is what one ought to do what what follows or what is entailed in terms of one what ought to do from negative utilitarianism and from negative utilitarianism it does not it's not clear that with from the applied ethics level that antinatalism follows, it's just not clear that applied antinatal. Well, applied applied no. anything is hard to How, say, right? Like when you yes, get- exactly. So then, then great, great, and it could very well be. It seems to be that I'm not arguing for applied antinatalism. I, I never was. Okay. I never was okay. arguing for applied antinatalism. So does that make sense? Right. I've always been arguing for in isolation. Give having a child is morally wrong. All right. So if you're going to change that to other scenarios, I'm talking here about the, the act itself. So we have to isolate these things so we can decide what's wrong and what's not wrong, right? If you're going to bring me, you know, you start trying to get me to concede about practical antinatalism because you know maybe it's preventing a bunch of suffering in nature. What you're doing is you're conceding the point of antinatalism. No, no, I'm I'm not I'm not. No, the, wait, 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 wait. How? All I'm, if I, all I'm saying is, from negative utilitarianism, here are some applied ethics that may or may not follow. That doesn't mean I'm conceding that negative utilitarianism is the correct normative theory. That's not me. How, does, how is there an entailment between me saying, me just pointing out the entailments of negative utilitarianism, how does that entail me subscribing to negative utilitarianism? Well, I mean, look, like... We're having a debate here, right? So, like, I feel you, like if you're you said, view, right? you said, no, you said that, look, all I did was point out what and what are not the entailment of utilitarianism. And then you said, what you're doing right now is you're conceding to negative utilitarianism. How is, how is that what I'm doing at all? Well, it seems to me like every single point you've brought to me so far has led to the negative utilitarian. No, it, it ha- no, 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 it hasn't. No, no, it hasn't. Everything I've done is saying on a negative utilitarian view, here's what may or may not follow. I never said, I never gave you a syllogism and with a conclusion, therefore negative utilitarianism is true. So where is the entailment? Wait, just to make it, just to, just to make it abundantly clear, do you understand the distinction between an internal critique and an external critique? Can you wait a second? I just want to say something. Okay, so... Right, uh, but, but th- I think this clarifies it, right? So just, just answer it. Yeah, he's critiquing my, my negative utilitarian view, and he's trying to say that I'm not an actual anti right, but, 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 no, 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 that's not what he did. Do you understand that <laughs> what he did is an internal critique of your view and showed that on a pragmatic level, you don't have reason to be an antinatalist, but accepted that in principle you do? Yeah, which is my point. That's the antinatalist point. We're not talking here about, just like the rapist person who says rape is bad, he's not talking about rape in a scenario right. where... But at no point did he concede to your views, and at no point did he <laughs> even shake you off your principle. It's just a pragmatic discussion. Yeah, he's having a, this discussion, right? But I'm just saying, what is why his, did what you is say, Then why did you say that what you're doing is conceding to negative utilitarianism or antinatalism? Well, I'm just saying, look, like I have my view here of negative utilitarianism. Why? Why did you say? Why did you say? 
why did you say, no, not poking a flaw in it is not the same thing as me conceding to it. So yeah. why did you say that what I'm doing is conceding to negative utilitarianism or antinatalism? I didn't say that. Sure, you can. Yes, have this you, where, like, yes, you did. No, yes, yeah, okay. you. Okay, yes, yeah. you did. You okay, good. Like, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But the thing is, you have to understand, though. You have this debate, right? You have to have your own position here to be critiqued, also. Like, if it's just my, me coming. No, my, like, my position. My, I don't have know, to. I don't that's, know. That's why, that, that's why. That's why I pointed out that what he did was I'm just playing the internal critique. He I don't assumed. What I'm saying. I'm he saying. assumed. He he assumed your position. That he doesn't have to have his own position. He's just saying from accepting all of your principled statements. Here's what results, and what results so is can't pragmatically be antinatal. So the conclusion here was that negative utilitarianism has no flaws that are obvious shown in this debate yet, and that antinatalism that's not is his, still That's not my conclusion. Point. But that wasn't his how point. What level are you operating on here? His, 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 his Wait, conclusion is that his, his conclusion... No, 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 no. His conclusion is that if we accept your principled negative utilitarianism, that on a pragmatic level, we have reasons to engage in extreme amounts of natalism. That's his conclusion. Extreme amounts? Like, you think you can take care of extreme amounts of children? I mean, right, that's you have his, to that, take care that, of them, that's, right? That's, 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 that's his view. I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, absolutely, his view would be like something like, you know, to a point, but the view is still that until to point, we've replaced extreme. all... To un, Right, because it's until we've replaced like all wild animals. That's his view. That, that seems to be an extreme form of natalism. Like when I take natalism, okay. I just mean that to be like that. There's okay, no. Can I go back to him? Um, the, the, right. There's no negative value to natalism. So can I can I go back? He to, um, seems to actually be prescribing prescribing natalism. But yeah. Just, so can I go before back you to, do that, but but sure. But before you do that, just concede that what he wasn't doing was conceding to negative utilitarianism. What he was yeah, doing was offering an internal critique. Okay, so we're good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. Oh, but listen, like, I, I came here saying I'm a negative utilitarian and an anti-natalist, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then I was, yeah, you, uh, you said you were a negative utilitarian and an anti-natalist, and so all I was trying to show you is that if you're a negative utilitarian, it might be pragmatically incompatible with... Yes, I understand that. Wait, can you hear me still? Yeah. Yeah, so I understand that, but what I'm saying is that I'm still in principle, I'm still an anti-natalist. I still yes, I grant that. Value I, I grant that. I grant that. But pragmatically, are, are you pragmatically an anti-natalist? You mean practically? Yeah, pra pragmatically. Practically. Sure. From a negative utilitarian standpoint, uh, if I had any money on me, which I kind of don't, uh, I would have to choose, you know, what's the best way to use that money to prevent suffering? And uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, having my own child is probably not the good way to do that. At best, I would have to adopt someone else's child in order to, uh, that would be preventing a lot more suffering than bringing my own child into existence when there's children who just have parents who just... Okay, well now, no, no, no. But how is, how is that responding to Avi's argument? I'm just talking about the. That president. doesn't respond, that doesn't respond to my argument. Again, the issue is... When you adopt children, instead of having your own children, what's happening is there are going to be more animals that are going to be having children of their own because you're adopting instead of having children of your own. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to do some. We'd have to, we'd have to do some like empirical we, measure, right? Like the, the point is, is so these, these, these are sort of these are, these, these are these are just sort of disvalued claims, though. Like the, the point is, is he's given you an argument, and it's not clear how you're responding to it because you'd have to show why it is the case that adopting instead of having children. Reduces suffering more. No, we've than... agreed. Right, but the, the, the point is, you just sort of we've agreed, that though. There. It's not a response to the. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, so we've agreed that in principle, antinatalism still holds, negative utilitarianism still holds, and that's. No, we, no, we didn't. Dude, dude. No, I know we didn't let's, agree let's, to that. Let's, let's not do that either, because we're doing an internal critique. That's an internal. Yeah, so, 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 is if I'm talking to a the, like, a, like if I'm talking to a Christian, and they're running the precept argument, I can actually grant the argument all the way up until they say, and the Christian God is what I should accept. And then when I accept the presuppositional argument up to that point, I'm doing okay, an internal you're, critique you're of you and showing that it doesn't entail Christianity. Well, what I'm trying to show you is we're not we're not conceding any points. Yeah, I get it. I get it. All right. So what I'm saying though is that he's poking holes in. Uh, Pragmatic antinatalism, right? right? Right, precisely. That's not that's, a, that's, that's that, antinatalism. But that was never the point. You just you just well, to like say that he's not well, done something he never intended to do. 
No, well, it's kind he of never no, intended. No, to he do. never intended. Okay, he never intended to. So I'm just trying to clarify this for the audience and for anyone who's listening. Right, that um, you know what's being attacked here is pragmatic anti-natalism from negative utilitarianism, which is just uh, whether it's practical or not practical is just uh, uh, as far as I know it's true, and as far as we know in this from this discussion, we haven't found any holes in it. Uh, so now we can talk about anti-natalism pragmatically, right? And then now I'm just going to ask you about adoption. Like, do you think that we'd rather have a kid that you're taking care of and a kid who's in an adoption house who doesn't have parents? That would it would reduce less it would reduce more suffering if you took that kid from the adoption house. Not necessarily. And, no, and if you, not ne that's not that's not necessarily the case at all. So, for example, remem remember, like, track the conversation. Remember, the whole point of being a pragmatic natalist was two for two reasons. Reason number one is that it would take over the wild animal niches and result in less suffering because there would be less wild animals breeding. And then number two, number two is when you have a larger population, any percentage, unless you want to make the case of the percentage of people researching a given thing changes based on the function of the population, when you multiply the percentage of people researching these weapons of destruction to accomplish ethelism by the population, it would just be more of them. And to the extent that having more of them reduces the amount of time that this technology will be attained, then that's the second reason. That it would result in a decreased amount of time to obtain the technology for the ultimate goal of, of the ultimate goal of ethelism, which is really just tying into the ultimate goal of reducing the net suffering. So, two reasons. Those are the two reasons to be an analyst. Now, when we talk about adoption, we are not breeding more humans into existence. We're not actually putting an extra human in the world. We're just transferring one human from one area to another. Now, that may result in less suffering for that human, but if it could be the case that instead of that, we would allow that human to suffer, but we prevent more animals from breeding by putting more humans in the world and taking over their niches, then that um. prevention of suffering might outweigh the prevention of suffering by transferring that human from one center to a home. Avi, just to be clear, are you making like it's a conceivable argument? Or are you saying that that's, you know, you lean towards that? I, I, I actually, um, well, I can, I can make both, but I, I think yeah. I would lean, yeah, I would lean towards. But, but, but like, there's, there's going yeah. to the, there's, there's be a cheap shot where he's just going to mm -hmm. say like, something like there's no evidence for that. And, and, sure, and sure. just grant him that, like we're, we're just leaning towards it. But just to be yeah. clear to Zohar, like, the point is, is that it's conceivable that and so you can't make a necessitation claim. It's a possible claim, and then we'd have to go hash it out in the data. And right. maybe we could do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I'm conceivable. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So all I'm saying no, is that, yeah. I also have an argument against it. I have an argument against that, which is just like, you have to ask yourself, you know, how much of the percentage of the population is actually working on something productive, right? So if there's a ton of people trying to become the world's best basketball player, and they're all just wasting so much time, you know, doing this really stupid shit. Then, you know, that's a huge waste of human effort that you could well, have been again, doing. Again, again, doesn't respond to his argument. Doesn't, doesn't respond. Doesn't respond it that. does because I'm just saying, like, the world as it stands right this now. This is right? tangential. You would need your child. This is just tangential. Your child would have to research into ethelism. Why do you think? Okay, so, what, 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 what? No, 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 no. Just one second. Like, what premise of our, uh, Avi's argument does that respond to? Um. Look, I'm just saying that there's a bunch of things to talk about here, and you guys are just kind of like... No, I mean, no, I mean look, like, you're, like, your like, like if it's, you're if not it, listening to my point. No, 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 no. Right, because if it's, if it's a rejection of Avi's argument, I mean, we're, we're operating natural language here, right? So it's going to be loose, but like, what premise of Avi's argument is that responding? It's responding to the... Yeah, we, we, let's, let's formalize it. No, let's formalize it right now. Here, right, right, would you, you, let's go to general. Here, let's, here, general. General, right. formalize. My computer right, is going right. to freeze if I go to general. Right, I mean, okay, go to general. Here's a, here's a syllogism. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the, the point is, if it's going to respond to the argument, it has to presumably respond okay, to so what, Okay, what so what premise of this argument is what you're saying responding to? Uh, can you say anything? Are you looking? Are you looking in general chat? I think so. Do you see the syllogisms? Yep. Okay. Would you like to respond to the syllogism? Yeah, it takes time to read. Uh, the okay, sure.
Yeah, P1. I mean, just look at P1, right? Mm-hmm. Antinatalism is talking about the action of procreation, all right? If you're going to mm-hmm. add, like, a practical reason to have children, I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm just saying, like, okay. as an antinatalist... Do you, have an objection? Word, Do you have an objection to P1? Yeah. So what's your objection to P1? You're not using the word antinatalism properly. What... Anti, by antinatalism, I just mean the view that we ought not have children. I'm talking about I'm talking about the applied ethics of antinatalism that we ought not have kids. You said here that we ought not to be an antinatalist, right? What's I'm the objection? Anti- what's the objection to P one? Look, do you understand what P one is? Look, it's all it's saying is that if antinatalism results in more suffering over the total span of the universe is round then a negative utilitarian ought not be an antinatalist. It's just saying that a negative utilitarian ought not do what results in more suffering. So that what's your objection? What's your objection to P1? That antinatalism is a principle, right? It's just saying that the action that you're doing is wrong, right? You could still do wrong actions as a negative utilitarian. All it's saying, you can call it blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. How is that an objection to P1? Look, hey, look. If, if we say antinatalism is blah, 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 it still follows. Look, if, if, if blah, blah, blah results in more suffering over the total span of the time the universe is around, then a negative utilitarian ought not be an antinatalist. Do you have an objection to that premise? Yeah, I do. I just explained it. What's the, what's the objection to the premise? Antinatalism, all right, I'm going to define it for you from Google, all right, because there is no philosophical definition yet, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it doesn't, that's tangential. It doesn't matter how you define it. Look, it's just an if, it if, if, it's if, it's an if then clause. Look, it's if, it, all it's saying is if X results in more suffering, let's just call it X. If X results in more suffering, if X. How is antinatalism causing more suffering? It doesn't matter if it's causing more suffering or not. All it's saying is if it does, if antinatalism results in more suffering, then a negative utilitarian ought not be an antinatalist. That's like, Okay, and it it's just saying It's just saying, okay, but that's not a rejection of P1. You saying it doesn't, doesn't reject P1. I guess I'm rejecting. You're it's not rejecting. So, so how, are you, how does that reject P1? If you say anti. How is. Saying antinatalism does not result in more suffering, reject P1. Because antinatalism is the idea that, the, that if you do give birth, that you're doing something wrong, all right? Now, you might still give birth to someone and do something wrong, even though it might reduce suffering in total in the universe, and you might still be a negative utilitarian. And you might also still be an antinatalist, all right? Just like you still think that rape is wrong. Even if you think, if even if you might rape someone because you know that it's going to stop. Why does this have anything to do with? Okay, look, look, how, look. Here's what I want you to do. Right? P one is 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 so that P implies Q. So, do you have an argument against P one? Can you can you come to an argument? Can you give me an argument that results in not P implies Q? No. Okay, so you don't have an argument against P one. Nope, it's against P two. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you have an argument against P2. So you're conceding that you're not actually... So you don't have a problem with P1. Is that correct? Uh, Let me just read it. Yeah, yeah. I agree with P1. Uh, Okay, good. Okay, so, so so now I have an argument for P2 being the case. And it was, again, mm -hmm. the isolated act of... Wait, wait, wait. So, so you, you disagree You disagree with P2. I'm providing a syllogism with P2 as its conclusion. So here's, so here's the syllogism. Here's the syllogism. Here's the syllogism. Human to human, I think, like, at least the audience wait, might not wait. understand. Here's the syllogism. You, d- you reject P2. I have an argument in favor of P2. Here is my syllogism for P2. Most humans aren't like taking these. I don't care. I don't care what most humans are doing. You're having a. a, a you're, this is. No, well, well, uh, well, obviously. Well, it would help you convince well, people into veganism. No, 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 no. You want to people what, pre- No, 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 no. What state, yes, 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 yes. What, what premise does that statement respond to? If you just grant you that you were going somewhere with that, what does that respond to? What I just said? Yeah. I mean, he's right now writing up his syllogism, right? So it's no, no, it's already, it's already written. It's there. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. 
Oh, so, sorry. I mean, so, I, so I wherever, was, uh, where, wherever you were going, wherever you were going with that, what premise does that respond? I guess now I have to read this syllogism. All right, this syllogism is just support of P two. Yeah, again, like he's not using the word anti-natalism correctly, because uh, as far as I'm concerned, when you say you're anti-rape, right? You might. Uh, as what you premise are you rejecting on this syllogism? All right, all right, I'll take a bit more time. Sorry to the audience that we have to waste time doing this. This isn't wasting time. I mean, this is just his argument that given earlier. Well, if I if I was watching this, I would be like, oh man, why do we have to wait? Right, but that's and that's why there's like what seventy people in here. Twenty five. My bad. <laughs> in any case, um, but the, the the point is, is it got kind of iffy what you were responding to. You know, you were saying things and neither Avi, who's running the argument, or even like me on behalf of the audience could figure out what it was that you were responding to. I mean, if you wanted, we could just run a straw poll right now and see if it's clear what you're responding to. I'm yeah, not, again, I'm going uh, to wager that most people won't know what you were responding to. So what we're doing now is we're just saying, here's the formalized written out version of what yeah, Avi had P2. said previously. Yeah, I disagree with P2. Okay. Antinatalism prevents a world where humans have technologically will evolve technologically than a bird. The rest is suffering by traveling through the universe of the of matter, destroying a biological life and uploading. Okay, so you're saying you you disagree with P two? Yeah. So you're saying, I and mean, just to, I just want to clarify: Are you saying you're agnostic about P two, or are you saying you actually disagree with P two? Okay, so that's an empirical claim. Can you provide evidence? Uh, you know, could you, you, I can't provide evidence either, just talk to you. Wait, wait, you didn't say you were agnostic about P2. P2 is an empirical claim. You said you were, you, you reject P2, you disagree with P2. So, do you have evidence to reject P2? Do you have evidence to say that P2, that basically say not R? How do you flip out? You, well, I'm sorry, what did, I didn't hear what he said. He didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, okay. you're super, you're super muffled. You're super muffled, dude. I'm muffled? Yeah, you're incredibly muffled. All right, so the thing am I still muffled? Yeah, but you're roboting. All right, uh, just... Just just go ahead. It sounds like you're okay. Okay, so... I have this P2 thing, right? Like, if antinatalism prevents the world where humans evolve technologically, then obliterate. I mean, the thing about antinatalism is it tells us that we should natalize people in, in order to prevent more births from occurring in the future, right? So if we're going to say that giving birth is wrong, which is what antinatalism is actually saying, then we're not going to, it's not going to prevent us from doing any of this stuff. Right? And it tells us that we should do this stuff because it would prevent more births in total. Again, uh, again, 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 I see the, so, yeah, I see the sophistry. Okay, again, again, we weren't talking about antinatalism in the normative theory sense. We were talking about antinatalism on the applied ethical level. Right, right, that's exactly Do you understand? You're equivocating, you're equivocating, you're equivocating. Do you understand? You're equivocating. You're using the same word to mean two different things. Okay, there's an equivocation between normative theory and applied ethics now. Right. Do you, so, do you, understand, you understand how do you understand how you're equivocating? I understand what's going on here, and it's that you're not okay. translating antinatalism properly. No, 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 that's a normative theory. That's a normative theory. Right, so that's so not applied clear, ethics. To clear it up, like just quickly like in as few words as possible, give a definition for antinatalism that you think is being used in this premise, and then Avi will clear it up if that's wrong. So my definition of antinatalism no, 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 is no, that no, it no, just... No, 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 no. What's, what's the definition that you think Avi is using here? And then if that's wrong... Avi Avi's using it. a definition... Okay, Avi's using a definition where antinatalism means that nobody should ever have a child... Even if the, he's basically using like a deontology kind of thing, which you know, as you tell no, we don't do that. No, no. Uh, so he's saying that an antinatalist would never no, have. No, it's a, that's a category error of my definition already. Right. I'm not. I'm not even referring to a normative theory. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> you've done. already made a category error on the definition. Right. Okay, sure. I mean, I have my definition that works perfectly fine. I don't. I didn't. That's not the. What do you think? 
what definition do you think is being used on my on my, th- on my syllogism and the syllogism that in the syllogism that I've presented you? It's not my definition. I, Whatever I, the definition that wasn't the question. Mind. That wasn't the, the question. The question was not. Do you think it's your definition? The question was, how do you think antinatalism is defined in this syllogism? It's defined as an antinatalist can never have a child in under any circumstance. That's how you're defining it. If you want to disagree, it's hard for me to, it, to know how it's you're. All it's saying. It. All right, look. All it's saying. Mind. All it's saying. All it's saying is that. On the applied ethics ethic level, we ought not have kids. That's all it's saying is that what we should do is not have kids. It's the view okay. that we should not have kids. That's that's what okay. it is okay. on the applied okay. ethical level. Like what in, what on the actual applied ethical level we should be doing, and that is that we ought not okay. have kids. Okay, so what that is how is? it's being used. So I am all I am referring to antinatalism on the applied ethic level. I'm not talking about antinatalism as a normative theory. All right, I'm telling you that that's not how I'm referring it to. to it. Okay. I'm referring to antinatalism on the so uh, the moral. All right, I'm you, know, you, you know what? Let's here. Here's 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 what may may help you. Let's. I'm, I will rewrite the syllogism and replace antinatalism. Listen, I will. I will. I can rewrite it and just say having kids, not having kids. I'll say not having kids. Would that help you? Right. No, because that's not the definition of anti No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's the point. He's obviously obvious conceding this isn't an argument against antihedalism. He's just but he's not fixing on negative utilitarianism. He's about yeah, to. But he's not, that's his point. He's not, no, he's he's, not fixing he's, it. Will, he's, he's willing to grant you that there's like... I'm fixing it right now. Yeah, the point no, is, no, no, no. He just said he's going to use not having kids, which is not fixing the right. definition. The, 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 the point is, is definition that, that I've been using. No, 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 no. He's conceding that this isn't an argument against your prescribed version of antinatalism. He's just what prescribed that... version? This is like the Google definition, all right? This is the definition right, of antinatalism. Fine, sure, fine, right? like, fine, fine, you can't make fine, your own fine, definition fine, fine. in the, the middle the, of the a debate. No, 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 no. The, the point is that he's just now, this is just an argument against not having kids. Here, which is not here my is the solution. I am making an argument against not having kids. And again, you're making this mistake, and I'm trying to tell you that you're not uh, defining antinatalism properly. You can. I'm not defining antinatalism. Antinatalism isn't in the syllogism anymore. Okay, I'll look at the syllogism again. Okay. And waste a bit more time. I mean, didn't you say I have to go to sleep? Like, you should probably not give me too many of these syllogisms. Oh, right? then anti- wait, I, I could replace one. I'm, I left one antinatalism in there. Hold on, let me replace that with not having kids. All right. Okay, there you go. Oh, well, I gotta do it again then. Hold on. Yeah. Argument. You just changed the entire argument by replacing the way oh, I, I did. It. All you did was what? All right. Let me know if that's good. Um, yeah, I think I took out all the antinatalists and replaced it with just not have kids. Just to ju- this is just to make it as simple. Okay, I agree with that. I agree with your with your. Okay. So you're not antinatalist. No, I'm. I had, I'm not conceding to antinatal. Wait, I'm not conceding to antinatalism. All I'm saying is there is a syllogism I'm making that there is a syllogism I'm making. Against not having kids. Okay, uh, I agree with your syllogism. What's your point? I'm still an antinatalist. Oh, okay. Okay. Look, are you an antinatalist on the applied ethical level? Nope. I never said I was. Oh, you're not. Okay. 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 Good. Okay. Fine. Fine. Can I, can That's yeah. Let me just mention something. All right. The definition. Can, you're of, really muffled. I can't. I cannot hear you. I can't. That sucks. Um. So the definition. Can you hear me now? Okay, you're better now. Okay, so the definition of antinatalism is not talking about the, you know, the pragmatic or practical scenario. It's talking about the act of procreation in isolation. And that's what an antinatalist is saying. So, so far in this debate, you know, you haven't 
shown me that antinatalism is wrong. I've just, I've just made a conceptual, I've just made a conceptual distinction between antinatalism as a normative theory and antinatalism with respect to applied ethics. There's nothing incoherent about the distinction I've made. At the end of the day, if you want to, at the end of the day, you can say you're an antinatalist with respect to your norm, respect to applied ethics. You're actually having kids because you having kids can somehow reduce other people from having more kids or something like that. That's fine. All I'm saying is that with respect to the actual act of having kids, antinatalism does not follow from negative utilitarianism. Again, you're using the word antinatalism incorrectly. There's nothing incorrect. No, there's nothing. You didn't say pragmatic, okay. no, you didn't say pragmatic no. practical antinatalism or anything like that. You just said antinatalism. Listen, listen, I said antinatal, uh, antinatalism on the applied ethical level. With respect to applied ethics. Do you understand this difference? Like, listen, do you understand when I... Do you understand the difference between antinatalism on the applied ethical level and antinatalism on the normative theory level? And listen, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to leave to go to sleep at 11.30. So we have... We have two... Like, two more minutes of this. And, uh, and I'm done. We should just conclude it then. I mean, we can continue another... Okay. All right. All right. Know. Yeah, I'll... You know what? I'll... Okay. Do you want the last word? Uh... Uh, sure, you can have the last word. You can, you can say something before I say the last word if you want. Okay. Um, all I, all the, the key point that all I came here to make is that if someone has the normative theory of negative utilitarianism, it, is, it doesn't seem to follow that from the normative theory of negative utilitarianism that antinat antinatalism on the applied ethic level follows in this pra in the pragmatic especially in the pragmatic sense i've offered a syllogism and i've offered a syllogism for that and i don't see a reply to that and so i i think that a negative utilitarianism utilitarian does not have to be an antinatalist on the applied ethical level and on the applied ethical level they can actually be a strong natalist and it can be a strong natalist that doesn't apologize to their kids also all right, I'll let you have the last word. All right. So, I mean, antinatalism, by the definition that has been used for the longest time, it's on Google, you know. Um, the definition is not talking about, you know, some kind of practical scenario. It's just talking about the act of procreation in isolation. And that's kind of what I've been doing, been thinking, how the way I've been thinking about it, you know, so far. But I'll be about a good point, you know, that maybe there could be scenarios where uh, practically speaking, you would be preventing more births by giving birth to a human. So it would obviously be a scenario where I, where I would say, you know, yeah, that would be a good idea. But that doesn't uh, necessarily show that antenatal is false. And uh, uh, for wellness today. Uh, we can also talk about the pragmatics of having your own child. But I mean, because there's kids being adopt, being just left without parents, I feel like at the very least, just take care of those kids. Um, you know, you could teach them to be educated and maybe try to convince them to do research for ethelism if you want. But um, I think that basically sums up the debate. Uh, yeah, antinatalism doesn't mean that you should never have kids. It just means that there's a negative value that you assign to birth. All right, well, it's good talking to you. Uh, did you did you by any chance end up recording it? Yeah, do you mind if I post that on my YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And can you link me your YouTube? Um, can you just link your YouTube channel in general? Because is, is it okay if I make, can take your um, YouTube channel? Can I take the video and upload it as content of my own as well? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sure. Okay, can you link your YouTube channel in general? Okay, yeah. I'll do that in a second. Nice okay, cool. Yeah, nice talking to you.